sorry for the technical issues are you able to hear us now can someone please comment okay sure thank you so uh, welcome uh, to the day to day 2 of uh, management of learning disorders and uh, uh, thank you all for joining us on the sunday morning and just a quick recap of what all we had yesterday so we learned about what the definition of learning disability is that it is a problem with uh, with learning in academic fields uh, uh and the child has normal iq otherwise we also saw the various reasons why a child with a learning disability or uh, the various other conditions that can uh, be mistaken for learning disability so we saw that lack of a stimulating environment can have that uh, lack of uh, uh, if visual and hearing issues can cause that uh, speech delay can cause problems in learning uh, other medical conditions also like hypothyroidism needs to be ruled out adhd is something that is very commonly seen we saw also about the various socio emotional issues that can happen in a child with uh, with learning disability and as to how parents can help in a very simple way as what needs to be done so uh, apart then dr bhasi gave a wonderful uh, lecture on actual uh, the neurological issues that are there in children with learning disability how there are three main streams the ventral stream the dorsal stream and also uh, role of the inferior frontal lobe and as to how exposure to print is that is something new that i learned that uh, early exposure to print is needed for the development of these systems so following this recap on uh, following uh, this recap on what happened yesterday today what we will be having is uh, we'll be having our uh, remedial trainer speak to you nadia moidi she will be speaking on uh, uh, on remedial training that means that uh, uh, that needs to be done for children with learning disability So Nadia Moedin has uh, done her MA in psychology and an MP in learning disability and is currently doing PhD. She is a remedial trainer here at Astakine and is also senior research fellow in psychology in the UC College Alwa. She has over 10 years of professional experience working with children with learning disability. So I now invite Nadia to start off today's session by talking about learning disability. Hi. Good morning. Am I audible? Okay. So today we reach the climax part. Like today we are dealing with what is how we can manage children with learning disability. I know you people are very eager to know what are the strategies that we are using and what is exactly remedial training is. so today i am going to talk about remedial training what are the uh, components of a proper remedial training program what are the things we remember while planning a remedial training and uh, the study skill strategies and things about uh, the certifications and all okay so let's start so remedial training what is remedial training remedial training is the fortification of child's learning skill it is the strengthening of a child's learning skills if the child has any skill deficit any academic deficit we do training in order to strengthen their learning skills and it closes the gap between what the student know and what he is expected to know so while assessment we can see that if a child is uh, studying in fifth standard and then we do an assessment and we can see that a two year gap will be there like if uh, he is in fifth standard his academic performance is equal to a third grade child or a second grade child so we are doing remedial training in order to fill that gap so the gap filling is what exactly the remedial training is 
So it is uh, intended mainly to overcome the deficits in reading, writing, and maths, the basic academic skills. And the child's strength, at first we start with the strength, then only we go to the deficit area. So, so we give more importance to the strength of the child and we work from it. Okay. So these are the basics of a remedial training. And while uh, planning a remedial program, what are the things that we need to remember? Uh, it is very important that uh, each remedial strategy must have a clear theoretical perspective. Okay, it is based on theory, it is based on research. Okay, so we uh, do training based on that research, why we are uh, doing that uh, particular strategy, why we are using that, what is the rationale of doing that. So that is very, very important. And the next most important thing is, it is a step-by-step -step procedure. It takes time, so give enough time for the child, okay? Don't get hurried for uh, doing remedy training and uh, do finish off the task, but give them enough time. And it is also conducted on student space, okay? So give important, here the uh, student is important. So give important to him, okay? So uh, it needs a lot of practices, okay? Practice make man perfect, right? So. Uh, we are giving more and more practices, then only they can apply what they learn to the new uh, situations, okay? So practice is very important. And then we do periodic assessment. We do daily assessment. We do weekly assessment. We do monthly assessment. We do yearly assessment. So assessments is very, very important in a remedial training package, okay? So it is uh, the last point is very important it is one-to-one -one relationship with the child okay one-to-one -one attention only one child at a time it is not a group program each child is unique and we give importance to the individuality of the child okay so it is very important to give one-to-one -one attention okay so and is it uh, different or is it uh, same with special education? Actually, remedial training comes under the umbrella term of special education, but it is different from special education. That you must know, right? So if a child is doing, if, if we are giving a child a remedial training, it is a must that the child must have average or above average IQ. IQ is very important in remedial training. If the child is not showing a average IQ, then uh, we will uh, plan the training according to that, okay? So IQ is very important, but for special education, IQ is not very important, right? So if the child is having below average IQ, then they will do a special education training. So it is based on the unique need of the child. Each child is different. So based on child's deficit area, we uh, prepare an IEP and we do remediation based on that. But in special education, it is uh, based on the group need. Okay, so that there the group is more important. So, uh, but in remedial training, we give important to the child. And the last thing is improvement is mandatory that in remedial training, if we are giving proper remedial training for a learning disabled child, then we must show improvement. He must show improvement after six months, okay? So improvement is must in remedial training. If the child is not improving, then we must check for any other issues, okay? So in special education, improvement is not necessary. So how? And next we, uh, we will go to how we can plan a proper remedial program. So first of all, we need an assessment. When a child come with poor school performance, we rule out many things that we discussed yesterday, that we rule out physical cause, we rule out intellectual cause, we rule off uh, emotional cause, we rule off all the other environmental issues. And how, then if the child is not studying well, 
then we will do an proper assessment we do an iq assessment we do an academic assessment and based on that assessment we prepare an iep and after preparing iep we talk or we discuss the issue with the parents it is very important psychoeducation is very important because parents support is very 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 necessary so we talk with the parents these are the issues that uh, we are dealing uh, your child is having this sorts of problem it is okay he is perfectly fine we can give uh, him or her training and the he will definitely improve so okay so assurance or don't give uh, false assurance okay so uh, give them the proper thing give them the proper what is uh, fine in the assessment and psychoeducation is a very major uh, important step in that then we give study skill training that in order to make study uh, faster we do study skill training then social skill training that these children have problems in social uh, situations they have they the lack social skills so they give uh, so we give social skill training in remediation and then if the child is having any behavioral issue we give behavioral management training okay so this is what, uh, in the whole remedial program package these all factors will include okay so coming to assessment okay the as i mentioned earlier we do an intelligence test mostly we use weschler's intelligence scale for children and in indian population we use misic that is malins intelligence scale for indian children it is a verbal and a performance test and these learning disabled child will Uh, score more points in the performance test and they lack uh, scores in the verbal test okay then we do a grade level assessment usually we do nimhans slt battery it has two levels 5 to 7 years and 8 to 12 years two levels are there grade level reading writing math spell, uh, spelling test are there and we do based on the grade of the child based on the standard of the child in which class he is studying okay so reading test is there spelling test is there math test is there writing is also then we do associate uh, if there is any problem with attention we do attention test we do uh, visual spatial ability test visual memory auditory memory motor skills and this is this it's it takes time it takes two or three hours for a proper assessment so after assessment we make a individualized educational program it is very important in remedial training we can't do remedial training without preparing an iep e iep is a educational prescription about it is a blueprint of our remedial training uh, it it conveys what we are intended to do what, what are the strategies that we are using what are the rationale for doing that and what are the techniques we use what are the materials we need what are the assessments that we do so these all things are there in an iep and iep must contain the child's present level of performance he if, if he is reading level is equal to second uh, standard student then they we, we write that okay so present level of performance is there in iep and then we set goals okay Uh, we set uh, short term goals we set uh, long term goals and based on that goal we uh, we make a lesson plan for each session okay so these are all pre planned okay uh, so uh, before uh, the child come for remediation we make a remedial trainer must uh, do these all things as home task okay so uh, these are all pre planned thing and we make a lesson plans and we do a uh, remediation based on that so there are annual goals short term goals long term goals are there and uh, we uh, clearly state and how long it will take if a phonemic awareness for training phonemic awareness if it takes two weeks we write that okay so uh, it also contain that then there must be an effective evaluation evaluation is must okay so we also write a what strategy we use to evaluate the child okay so 
And next, we come to uh, the teaching strategy. So uh, I uh, will plan like that. What are the uh, errors that you usually seen and what are the remediation that uh, we give? Okay, so uh, reading is there, handwriting is there, math skill is there, study skills, and then assistive technology. So coming to reading okay what are the common uh, error what are the difficulties that these people these children show okay they have problem in uh, learning the letter names they can recite a to z from beginning to end but if we ask which letter is this or which letter is that they have confusion okay so they have difficulty in uh, naming the letter they have difficulty in sounding the letter they have difficulty in blending the letters sometimes the child knows the sound of the letter but if we said m a t say it together they have difficult to blend it together okay so they have problem in phonetic analysis they have difficulty in understanding that each each word is made up of small small unit of sounds okay so they have problem with reading comprehension comprehension is understanding some children will read fluently but they can't understand what they are reading okay so common errors are they read word by word okay o n c e ones their t h e r e their word letter by letter or word by word they read they substitute they uh, read home for house they omit certain words or omit letters omit words they mispronounce letters they uh, add on certain words they add on certain letters they do reversal they uh, read was for so so and like that they hesitate to read a uh, 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 sound will be there while they are reading and self correction uh, they correct themselves okay so then gazet word it is a very common error okay uh, when they uh, find the first letter they guess a word and read okay so guess that word and they hate punctuation they will not know what to do when they uh, so a uh, uh, full stop comma or anything like that okay so that is a uh, problem with punctuation and what are the strategies that we uh, use in order to remediate it so reading instruction and the first and the primary thing is print awareness that basi sir had mentioned yesterday that uh, it is before going to school the child must know that anything that is written convey a message okay i read somewhere that while we are preparing food for toddlers show them the food packet and this is whatever it is naan or sir like it this is sir like and this is your food okay so it makes uh, it uh, makes the child you know to understand that anything that is written is convey a message okay so print awareness is very 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 important so uh, how elements of a uh, balanced reading pro while we are making a reading program what are the things that we remember so okay so a remedial reading program must contain reading to children we must read to children we read uh, stories to them okay then phonemic awareness is there or a language development show something show a, something to a child and ask what this is and say something about it okay so or a language development listening skill they have difficult to uh, speak fluently okay so talk to them spend time with them okay systematic vocabulary development daily two or three new words must be trained okay uh, learned so guided reading with attention to comprehension comprehension activities must be included the individual reading lessons daily reading practice must be there then silent reading also that these are the reading programs that we follow
Then phonemic awareness that I mentioned earlier, it is a conscious awareness that spoken language is made up of sound, individual sound. These children have difficulty in identifying the sound. They have difficulty in discriminating the sound. They have difficulty in manipulating the sound. If I said m after is math, and if I take away the m sound and substitute it with b, what will be the sound? What will be the word? They have difficult to say that it is bad. Okay, so they have difficulty in manipulating. They have difficulty in identify first initial middle sound like that. So, <clears throat> how we train phonemic awareness? Uh, give them rhyming songs. Okay. Uh, uh, train them to sing many rhyming songs uh, or engage in many uh, tongue twisters like that. Okay, if we get free time, train them like that. Okay, give uh, tongue twisters like then I give a word and tell him to say the first sound or the say last sound or the middle sound. There are many practices like that. So practice like that. Then uh, help them to break the word into syllables. Okay, give a word and ask them to break it in small, small sound units. So uh, then after identify after identifying uh, letters and sounds and all that, the uh, next thing is blending. Give individual sound and ask them to blend. Give visual cues, okay? Take a B, take a A and take a T and blend it, blend it, blend it. Give all type of visual cues so that they can understand how to blend it. Segmenting words into breaking the words into small, small units, then substitute many uh, sounds and uh, ask them to find new words and uh, print uh, while reading. Ask them to put a finger uh, below the line so that they will not miss the line. So first thing uh, is letter recognition and sound law. First we teach the letters and then we introduce the sounds. For sounds, we first, we introduce short vowels. Now that Basi sir had mentioned uh, earlier that English is not a transparent language. English is an opaque language. We have 26 letters, but we have two, 44 sounds. Okay, so each letter sounds differently. Okay, so that differentiation is very important. So teach them or train them like that. Okay, so introduce short vowel sound, then long vowel sound. In between, uh, introduce consonant sounds, then word families, blending or like that. So it's a huge process. Okay, it takes time and give maximum visual cues like that. Uh, if the child is having difficult to read app, but he can understand that oh, the first picture is apple. So that is a ah. and next is top and so the first letter is t so at like that b act so give visual cues maximum then uh, introduce word families add families and family first we introduce uh, vowels then we introduce uh, word families like this and make chart with it word walls with it and it is very interesting to work with them use maximum cues use uh, plastic letters use play dow and all any activities anything they like okay so then after understanding uh, the words, uh, the sounds and all, then we go to the fluency activity. How to read fluently? Teach high frequency sight words. Sight words are commonly seen words. There are uh, many sight words. There are Dolch list, Fry's list, many lists are available in internet and teach sight words with flashcards okay because uh, learning sight words will improve fluency repeated reading okay if the give a passage to a child and ask him to read and you must uh, you should uh, you should not down the errors and then give the same passage again and again and not down that the errors are decreasing or not. So echo reading is the uh, adult will read and the child will 
repeat it okay read aloud to other students that we do in a school setting daily reading Re daily 15 or 10 minutes of reading practice is must then comprehension activity we give maximum visual cues uh, read to the child and uh, read a um, story and stop in between and ask the child to predict the ending and encourage them to use metacognitive skills. Metacognition is understanding about their own, their own memory, okay, their, their own cognitive skills, okay. So uh, ask them to uh, make uh, self question, make small, small questions from a uh, passage and uh, it will improve their metacognitive skills and it will improve their comprehension also. So uh, this is visualization. Uh, if we give uh, this picture to a, a child, it's very interesting, it's very funny. They will see all the minute details. Okay, once I give this picture to a child and he said, yes, ma'am, there is two birds there, right? I think their nest is there in the oh tree and their babies are eagerly waiting for them so they will their imagination will improve they will t tell us uh, funny 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 stories and many things okay so give the maximum visual cues like this and this is uh, for while writing sentence, uh, draw it okay the man stepped on the skate and fell and uh, draw a picture and then it is easy for them to read, okay. So uh, that's the end of uh, reading. So then coming to writing uh, instructions. So uh, first of all, uh, here uh, our children are more uh, exposed to the mobile screen and so they don't know how to hold a, a pen or pencil before going to school, okay? We are giving, uh, it has actually happened once I, I give a, a textbook for a child and I wonder because the child is trying to zoom the textbook. I said, baby, this is not a, a mobile screen, this is a Oh, textbook. Okay, so that much abuse of mobile is there. Okay, it is another thing. So, mm, writing uh, is coming to writing. What are the errors? They have inaccurate formation. Their formation of letters is problematic. Direction of letters, if it is too slanting, one side or right side or left side, uh, there is no space between the lines. Uh, inability to stay online, they have difficult to uh, write in a line, okay, uh, pencil uh, grip, so they, they are putting too much of pencil pressure, they don't know how to hold a pencil, mirror writing, that is the ultra thing, okay, mirror writing is there, lack of space between the words, and slowness, it's very, it is a tiresome uh, job for them to write, okay, they will get uh, tired easily, okay, so uh, uh, incomplete notebooks, so these are some of the writing samples. Uh, there you can see many errors, spelling errors are there, uh, formation of letter is problematic, between lines is, uh, uh, there is no space between the words and uh, the sentence for, uh, everything is having problem, okay, punctuation mark is not there. This is also a writing sample there. They, they are unable to stay on the line, okay? So there are many errors, spelling errors are there. Um, so what are the things that we do while pl uh, planning a handwriting activity? Three major areas are there. One is readiness uh, thing, and then we go to manuscript writing activity, then cursive writing, okay? Don't skip any uh, level. You must follow e each three levels accordingly. So what are the readiness activity? Re today's children lack that readiness activity. In older times, we give children to play with mud, to play with uh, what pebbles, play with uh, any things. But now the ch children only know to operate the mobile phone, right? So give them maximum readiness activities like whole body exercises, give fine motor skill uh, exercises, gross motor skill exercises. I think Anju will say that. 
so uh, cutting and crafting activities chalk to give them slate to write give them crayons to write uh, sand tracing is there sand writing is there talking through movement go up go down and then a uh, line okay so talking through movement draw or maze draw lines and ask them to color in between so uh, drawing lines through mazes and pathways and then we uh, come to the manuscript writing manuscript writing if the child is having confusion with b or d or anything like that give them uh, give them a copy or give them that letters and ask them to place in the uh, table so if they have any confusion they can refer it okay give an individual copy an alphabet of numbers so that they can use it okay then uh, give double lines in between uh, big lines in between and ask them to uh, color in between okay so uh, use paper squares okay use squared notebooks like that and so that they can write in between okay the give dotted lines to write alphabets these all things will help them to write effectively so cursive writing also uh, give dot to dot uh, thing so the dot to dot cue uh, so that they can join the dot and write and use colors use color code in order to find the direction and all and practice letters with similar there is tall family tall family like t l like k like that then there is closed o families that there a o q like that okay so teach them like that uh, teach them according to uh, these similar patterns so uh, coming to the expression area uh, in the previous slides we discussed about the mechanical aspects and now we are discussing about the written expression how they express what they right okay so the some children have uh, is okay with writing skill but they don't know how to express what is there in their head okay so expression is there in expression uh, fluency how much words they knew the number of words in the vocabulary syntax and how to construct a sentence they have problem in uh, constructing uh, or putting the words together to form uh, sentences vocabulary structure grammar capitalization punctuation and the content okay their vocabulary is only limited and they do know how to uh, write or how to imagine or how to present the whole thing in a paper okay but these all areas must be uh, very important and we must know where the child is having problem and plan the remediation according to that okay so uh, written expression training some of the examples are provide scramble letter scramble words so that uh, they can join the uh, words together to form sentences okay her quiet cat the dog so uh, give some words like this so that uh, the meaningfully they can join to form uh sentences okay so give incomplete sentences and ask them to write it and uh, give some uh, words uh, like but because and give two sentences and ask them to connect these two sentences with but because and after etc and here also give them maximum visual cues like that okay so uh, then the uh, the cat is playing with the ball and in the first uh, thing the man is going to work the cat is playing with a ball like that okay give some cues okay so that they can know how to uh, make a sentence meaningful sentence so uh, lastly coming to max instruction what are the things uh, some children uh, i think somebody had asked it, uh, some children is okay with uh, uh, okay with the language area but their only problem is with the 
max they, they are discalculating so what are the uh, errors or what are the problem that we see in mathematics okay so uh, the ma uh, mathematics remediation only deals with the basics of max okay so uh, it deals with the place value uh, the if the child is having problem with addition subtraction multiplication division fraction decimal percentage these all areas that we focus okay so uh, what uh, the major symptoms they show is they have difficulty in understanding the word problems okay they knew the operational level they knew how to add or how to subtract but when it is come in word problem they have difficult to understand okay they have difficult to under, uh, organizing things in sequence okay so for that you can give them uh, pictures like puzzles like that so that uh, they can uh, organize things in a sequence okay difficulty they have difficult to handle money they have difficult to oh, look at the clock and say the time they have difficulty in understanding day week Uh, seasons months like that so uh, here also uh, for max instruction there some readiness skills is very important that we must give before the child is going to school or like that so first of all is his classification give uh, some material for the child and ask them to arrange it according to some specific property arrange in in according to a color or arrange it according to a shape these are all the basics of maths okay so classification exercises must be given ordering it it, it is important in uh, learning ascending order descending order how to order things from smallest to higher or from higher to small okay so that ordering skills is very must and one to one correspond so if we give uh, five pebbles five small pebbles and put it in a jar and give and the and in another jar there is a bigger pebble pebble but the same amount so uh, if you ask a child is both the uh, box containing the same amount of thing so if they uh, understood the one to one correspondence they will say yes okay so uh, uh, how each one is related that is very one to one uh, correspondence is important in max so strategies for addition uh there are three main uh, strategies one is counting all uh, that we give two uh, group of materials okay five uh, things and three things in the other group and ask them to ask to uh, count the two groups together that is counting all and counting from is uh we give 5 plus 3 and ask the, the tell them that the first group contain 5 and start counting from the second group from uh, the last number like if it is the first group is 5 and ask them to count from 6 in the second group okay so bigger number plus bigger number and uh, uh, ask them to identify which is the bigger one and then add from that okay so bigger number so give maximum visual cues like this uh, or this is also an example for visual cues so that they can uh, see and calculate and uh, most of the children have a problem with wo uh, word problem okay they have difficulty in comprehending so uh, there are many synonym for uh, addition right so make a chart like this uh, that means in all all together some total if you see these all things in a question do addition if you see left difference more less bigger heavier in the question you, the operation is subtraction so uh, it's very confusing for them okay so make a chart like this and stick it somewhere in the classroom okay so they can easily identify what to do okay so these are some of the visual cues or puzzles use puzzles use uh, in order to uh introduce addition or thing like that subtraction like that uh, you can use uh blocks or you can use uh puzzles word puzzles like this 
so give maximum visual prompt like that if they are uh, doing uh, multiplication give them uh, small faded lines right you can see right so uh, it it give a cue that how to uh, do the operation how to multiply it or uh, balance many children will miss the balance thing so put a small um, circle there so that they would don't miss to uh, write the balance there so uh, coming to study skills these are all uh, we uh, discussed about uh, what are the strategy reading writing and maths and then uh, we coming to the study skills study skill uh, helps student to uh, study more effectively it uh, it is learning how to learn okay so there are different type of study skills one is preparatory study skills so uh, if the child is uh, sitting for uh, to learn something there must be some preparation their motivation their attitude matters if the child is not motivated to study leave him okay don't give uh, strain to them okay so motivation attitude towards a particular subject attitude towards the teacher it all matters time management give them proper activity schedule give them proper uh, time table and uh, understand the importance of time keeping okay so self management how to evaluate themselves how to reinforce themselves okay these are the preparatory study skill then acquisition how to acquire knowledge how to gather information in a classroom sitting teacher will say many things so uh, train them to uh, understand the key points okay so how to acquire a Mm, acquire information is very important uh, how to make notes okay how to uh, physically how to prepare for a uh, classroom setting and read vocabulary review vocabulary before if we uh, teach a new lesson write the new words in the blackboard okay so they can review that vocabulary use short form use abbreviations so uh, recall and how to recall certain things use uh, maximum graphical organizers use mnemonics mnemonics uh, i wrote an example pens so parts of atom uh, proton electron neutron and shell okay so give uh, mnemonics give mock test okay trial test before going to an actual uh, uh, examination give them trial test give them exact uh, question paper or exact time we can give the exact question paper but uh, we can give previous years question paper and uh, do mock test okay it will really help and these are some of the graphical organizers this is uh, a mind map it is very effective the child is uh, difficult to learn big question answer make it in in a mind map okay uh, so it is about scorpions how they look so it is one branch 1 2 3 4 five major points are there so five major points are Uh, represented with five colors okay so each branches have some sub points like that so while the child is writing the answers this mind map will appear in their mind okay so they can make it sentence from this so mind map is very effective and then next we will talk about the assistive technology what are the assistance uh, if the child is having problem how we can compensate the problem by providing proper tools okay so we can give computer if the child is having problem with writing we can give them keyboard or we can give them a computer to write a recorder if they have listen problem with listening skill they give Uh, we give to, uh, tape recorder ear for they have distraction if they cannot uh, they have difficulty with auditory attention they can uh, give ear for calculator screen readers spell checker is also it is available on amazon spell check is the checker is there so um, we can provide these all uh, aids for them 
So next is accommodations and provision for students with health. So management is uh, management of learning disability is a two tier thing. Okay, we give remediation that is one part, and if uh, it is, uh, and we also give accommodation. Accommodation is in order to ignore or in order to bypass the weakness. We give many exemptions that are called accommodations. So. Uh, how to get accommodation or how to get relaxation uh, during examination? What are the steps involved? First and the foremost thing is get a uh, bona fide psychometric assessment. That means get a assessment IQ or learning disability IQ assessment report from a certified clinical psychologist. That is a must, uh, RCI recognized, Rehabilitation Council of India is RCI. RCI recognized clinical psychologists must do a, a psychometric assessment and get a report from them and produce that report uh, in the medical board and the uh, medical board in every government hospital, there is a medical board and they will give us the disability certificate. In that disability certificate, they will indicate the percentage of disability and what are the accommodation that can be given okay so along with that disability certificate and the iq report we can uh, and there is an application form that we uh, get from the school and uh, send it to the board okay uh, then uh, if uh, the board will provide us this uh, accommodations and exemptions okay so next uh, what are the relaxations or what are the exemptions that our state syllabus or uh, the CBSC is giving for uh, learning disabled child? Okay, they have the option of studying one compulsory. They have they uh, they need to uh, study only one compulsory language, and they can use the help of a scribe. Scribe is an assistant. Okay, uh, he will write uh, exam for the child. Okay, so. The the scribe must be two years or two class below the uh, child, okay? So if the child is studying in 10th standard, the scribe will be from 8th standard, okay? So uh, if uh, we are not availing the facility of scribe, we can get extra time. Extra time depends upon the paper. So uh, last, role of teachers. R teachers have a major role to play. They are the first person to identify the child is having any problem. And teacher is a manager and a ther ther therapist. And there's a significant contributor. Discuss the problem with the parents because parents can uh, easily, you can communicate with parents easily uh, than a professional. Okay, so pa discuss the problem with the uh, parents prepare the child for remedial strategy and uh, ease the pressure by giving more time, more support, more positivity, give them more time, okay? So role of parents, they communicate with the communicate with the school, okay? You should always keep a very good rapport with the teacher, communicate regularly and frequently, help the child, love the child, uh, uh, spend quality time with the child, read to them and uh, do homework. If you are busy with home uh, task and all, do it that first. And when you are uh, in a mood to teach the child, then only you can do that, okay? So otherwise, don't waste your time, okay? Visit school and uh, if you can, you can go for field trips and like. And the four um, uh, important beliefs are all children are capable of learning. Everyone can learn. It is our task to find out the most effective way to train them. So teaching strategy exists for help them to learn, okay? So all, all children need a safe and caring and positive, emit positive energy, give them positive energy, give them support, love, care. These all things are very important in remedial training. Parents have a major role to play. Okay, so um, 
these are some of the books for reference okay so give uh, spend time with your child i always tell to parents that before going to bed spend time with the child and tell in a soft voice that baby i love you and your grades or your marks in the report card doesn't matter what matters for me is you be a good human being i love you and i am with you always okay so this is pre sleep suggestion it is very effective try it it works okay so give them positive energy give them positivity give them love give them kisses give them hugs and this is by this i am ending my session and this is nadia moyde thank you so much thank you nadia it was such an informative session you explained beautifully what are the methods by which we can help children with learning disability now we are moving on to next session all the questions which i have put in the chat box will be dealt in the question answers uh, so have patience and now i'm calling i'm inviting anju for the next session anju she is a occupational therapist at astra medicity she has more uh, she has done her uh, bachelor's in occupational therapy and masters uh, especially in uh, developmental in children with developmental disability she has more than 4 years of experience in dealing with pediatric children population and she is very good at it so i'm handing over to anju you can talk thank you dr sitara so thank you dr sitara good morning to all today i'll be talking about the occupational therapy perspective of learning disability so this is the second day we are discussing about the learning disabilities so we know about learning disability what is learning disability what is the signs and symptoms of the learning disability and the associated conditions of the learning disabilities so so it's an umbrella term for wide variety of the learning problems and it include the presence of significantly reduced ability to understand new information as well as the complex informations and the uh, they may have reduced ability to cope independently which started before the adulthood with lasting effect on the development the difficulty in school does not always stem from learning disabilities and the other disorders that make learning difficult are anxiety depression stressful events emotional trauma and other conditions affecting concentration in addition sometimes attention deficit hyperactivity disorder as well as autism spectrum disorder sometimes co occur with the area that is confused with the learning disability so let's go to the basic types of the learning disability that is dyslexia difficulty in reading all these things are covered already so and the math learning disability that is dyscalculia and the impairment of handwriting ability that is dysgraphia so uh, the dysgraphia is basically classified into three types that is dyslexic dysgraphia motor dysgraphia and the spatial dysgraphia in dyslexic dysgraphia they may have the ability to copy the letters and they may have the good fine motor skills but their work will be, written work will be illegible that is because of they may have difficulty in the spelling it so that is dyslexic dysgraphia in motor dysgraphia uh, the problematic area will be their fine motor skills their muscle tone and their fine coordination and the child may look like clumsy they may require and reasonable amount of time and effort for the writing activity and their drawing skill and the copying ability will be poor but their spelling oral spelling ability will be normal and the writing part is usually affected because of 
their uh, grasp of the right, writing tool. That can be a pencil or a pen. <coughs> in spatial dysgraphia, the child may be having difficulty in understanding the space. So all the other things like uh, spelling ability, fine motor skills, that uh, all these skills will be normal for them, but they may have problem with the space of the page, like uh, inconsistencies between the writing letters and inconsistency spacing between the words. All these things will be problematic in spatial dysgraphia. And let's see the common signs and symptoms uh, in dysgraphia. So all we know um, that is generally uh, the written work will be illegible. And uh, as I said all earlier, there will be inconsistencies. That is, the written work will be the mixture of uh, print and cursive, upper and lower cases, and the size of the letters will be, uh, will be irregular, and shape as well, and the slant of the letters will be irregular. And inconsistencies will be there on the spacing, that is, position on page with respect to the lines and margins, as well as the space between words and letters. So uh, their written work may look like unfinished, unfinished words, or they may omit some letters, or they may omit some words. And coming to the motor part, that is how to hold a pen or pencil. So holding the writing instrument very close to the paper, or holding the thumb over two fingers, and child may write from the wrist. This makes their written work illegible. And the other symptoms are talking to self while writing or carefully watching the hand that is writing. And their work may look like slow and the written work will be like labored copying or labored writing, even if the work is neat and legible. And coming to the body position or position of the paper, it may look like strange. Uh, some may write from the wrist or some children may use their shoulders to write and the paper position will be uh, something different from the normal pattern. So all these are the common signs and symptoms uh, we used to see in this learning uh, dysgraphia. So now let's see the role of occupational therapies. Like uh, how does occupational therapy help in people with children, uh, children with dysgraphia? So uh, children are frequently referred by teachers to occupational therapies for handwriting difficulties in the classroom. So the role of OT includes determining which domains of handwriting are affected and evaluating the environmental factors that causes like uh, affect the child's ability to write properly. And uh, we are responsible for identifying underlying their motor skills, sensory skills, cognitive skills, as well as the psychosocial deficits. So uh, we work to reduce, basically we work to reduce the deficit the child is having in sensory motor performance. That is their eye-hand coordination, their visual motor integration, and the in-hand manipulation skills. So before going to the management part, uh, let's discuss the development of handwriting skills. So as we all know, it is a complex skill that requires the maturation and integration of cognitive, visual perceptual, and fine motor skills. The small muscles of the hand follow a developmental progression of prehension and grasp through infancy, toddlerhood, and the preschool years to prepare the child to grasp and manipulate a writing instrument. So uh, the prerequisites for handwriting skills are normal, uh, small muscle development, their eye-hand coordination, visual perception, auditory perception, directionality, sequencing, and memory. All these skills are prerequisites for handwriting skills. And the child's early experiences with scribbling paved the way for imitating and copying lines and circles in the preschool years. So uh, let's see the development of pre-writing and handwriting in young children. So by the age of 10 to 12 months, child will be able to scribble on paper. By two years, they, they started imitating horizontal, vertical, and circular marks on the paper, like a uh, standing line, sleeping line, and the circles. They will start imitating. By three years of the age, child will, child will be able to copy. They started copying the same standing line, a uh, sleeping line, and a circle. And uh, by the age of four to five years, they started copying the cross, right oblique line, square, left diagonal line, left oblique cross, and some letters and numerals, and some child, children may be able to write their own name. 
and uh, by the age of five to six years, they started copying triangle. They'll be able to print their own name and they, uh, they'll be able to copy most lower and uppercase letters. So when we are uh, treating the child, we need to remember all these developmental milestones. And now let's go to the pencil grasp development. The development of the pencil grasp in children, it follows a fairly predictable manner. So children commonly begin by holding the pencil with the whole hand, pronating their forearm and using the shoulder to move pencil in, in the initial stages. Later on, they use the more mature grasp, like uh, holding the pencil between the distal phalanges of the thumb. And uh, they use their thumb, index and middle finger to write. And uh, in more advanced stage, the forearm is usually supinated and the intrinsic muscles of the hand move the pencil. So starting from the uh, radial gross palmar grass and a child may mature to a more uh, dynamic tripod grass. So this is the development of pencil grass. So now let's see the factors that contribute to the writing difficulties. Uh, there is intrinsic factors as well as the external factors. So first let's discuss about the external factors. So the main thing is that poor teaching method. That is the main reason uh, for a eligible handwriting. And it can be, uh, if the child does not receive sufficient instruction and feedback, when she, or she, uh, when she or he start a learning letter formation. So the errors can become habitual and results in poor legibility. And the important thing is that uh, if we are trying to teach the uh, teach writing before the child is developmentally ready, so that can also result in poor writing skills. If the child is not mature enough or if the child is not met the prerequisite skill of handwriting, then we are teaching them, we are trying to teach them writing, then obviously it will result in poor handwriting skills. Uh, now let's see the intrinsic factors that causes handwriting difficulty. Uh, they are kinesthesia, like uh, that is the awareness of position and movement of the part of the body by means of the proprioceptors that is present in our muscles and joints. And uh, if the fine motor skills are inadequate, that also results in illegible handwriting and their eye-hand coordination, that is coordinated control of eye movements with hand movement and the processing of visual input to guide reaching as well as grasping. So uh, that is the main thing uh, that if child is having inadequate eye-hand coordination, they may end up with uh, illegible handwriting or poor written works. And the next thing is visual perceptual skills. That, uh, that visual perceptual skills enable a child to make sense and to interpret what they are seeing. And the last one is the visual motor integration. So in which uh, visual motor integration, that is the ability to incorporate visual information that we perceive with our motor skills in order to correctly, correctly execute the movements of our hands as well as our lower extremities. So moving on to the occupational therapy assessment of handwriting. So first we'll start about the observation part. Uh, we need to know about the uh, which hand is dominant and uh, we need to know the pencil holding pattern, their paper position while writing, and their sitting posture while writing. And uh, we used to assess the components of legibility that include letter formation, alignment, spacing, slant, as well as the size, and the rate or speed of writing. All these things uh, we used to assess in the initial sessions. And later on, we'll, uh, we use the checklist and standardized assessment tools. Some commonly used standardized assessment tool by occupational therapists are Denver handwriting analysis. So it is a cursive handwriting scale designed for evaluating writing of the students from the grades three to eight. And the next one is Minnesota handwriting test. It's a near point copying test and can be administered in five to 10 minutes. It assesses rate, legibility, form, alignment, and size and spacing of the written work. Next is evaluation tool of children's handwriting. 
So this evaluates the child's uh, manuscripts as well as the cursive writing. This is used for the children from grade one to six. And uh, the scale focuses more on the rate and the legible work of the uh, children. Next is a handwriting self-evaluation checklist that, uh, that can be used by the children by themselves. And the checklist may contain questions to monitor their letter formation, sizing, spacing, line awareness, letter positioning, speed, neatness, and their legibility. So let's move on to the intervention part. So what occupational therapists will do in this graph here? So uh, usually we do remediation, accommodation, and modification strategies for managing this, this graph here. So I commonly use treatment strategies, uh, perceptual motor training, motor learning, cognitive training, sensory integrative therapy, biomechanical, and neurodevelopmental training. So first, let's see what is a multi-sensory approach. So the handwriting intervention that incorporating a sensory integrative approach employs a variety of sensory experience. Like uh, we use proprioceptive stimulus, tactile stimulus, visual, auditory, and olfactory inputs that is incorporated with the writing activities. So the multisensory approach is thought to encourage sensory integration and affect the quality of motor output, such as improving legibility of written letters. So these are the some of the uh, example of multisensory approach, like multisensory activities, which we can use to improve their writing skills. The first one is sky writing or writing in the air. Here we are using the proprioceptive input along with the writing activity. And the second thing is tracing letters over a hard or rough surface. So here we are using the proprioceptive as well as tactile input incorporated with the writing activity. And this is uh, copying and tracing on the normal paper and bead stringing. That is a pre uh, prerequisite for the handwriting skills and it is a preparatory activity. And using bait, baits on the wrist. So it will again provide the proprioceptive input as well as the tactile input while the child is writing. And block designing and writing, finger writing in a tray of rice or sand and rainbow writing and the lacing through the letters. These are all preparatory activities for handwriting. And the common frame of reference used by occupational therapists in handwriting training are uh, neurodevelopmental frame of reference, acquisitional frame of reference, and uh, sensory integrative frame of reference and accommodations. So in uh, neurodevelopmental frame of reference, this is based on uh, neuromaturation principles and the typical sequence of neuromotor development. So here we'll be focusing more on modulating their muscle tone promoting the proximal joint stability and improving the hand function. So these are all goals of this approach. So the, some of the activities that we can use under the neurodevelopmental frame of reference are animal walks. So like uh, uh, elephant walking, bear walking, all these kind of animal walks will help to improve their uh, co-contraction as well as their proximal joint stability. And in acquisitional frame of reference, uh, so as we all know, handwriting is a complex motor skill and like other acquisitional skills, it can be improved through practice, repetition, feedback, and reinforcement. According to this acquisitional frame of reference, if we are teaching the child directly and implementing a brief daily sessions, and if, the, if our treatment program is matching to the current level of the child and it is planned based on the evaluation uh, evaluation and their and the uh, treatment thing is uh, the activities are used by the child in a proper meaningful manner all these things are happening then uh, when the therapist and educators are employs all these conditions in a positive and introducing dynamic learning environment child will be more likely to become efficient and eligible in their written works so next is sensory integration frames of reference so this includes controlling sensory input through selected activities to enhance the integration of sensory systems at the subcortical level. So um, 
All sensory systems including proprioception, tactile, visual, auditory, olfactory and gestatory sense can be tapped with the handwriting intervention program which will enhance the learning. So uh, writing tool, the writing surface, writing position, all these things are integral part of the sensory integration frame of reference. And um, in the first picture, child is lying down on the swing and child is writing. That time child is bearing weight on their forearm and writing. So here we are using the vestibular input, proprioceptive input, as well as tactile input incorporated with the writing activity. And in the second picture, the child is uh, writing in different surface other than the paper and pencil. They are using different kinds of surface. So hereby we are providing the tactile input incorporated with the writing activities. Next is biomechanical frames of reference. So this adjusts occupational performance in terms of range of motion, strength and endurance. And various ergonomic factors are also co considered in the approach to be improved. So the first thing is sitting posture. Although the standing and lying down, uh, lying prone may be encouraged as alternative writing positions, students spend most of their time in school day seated in the desk. So the student seating position while in the classroom must be adjusted immediately. Students be seated with, a, uh, with the feet fir firmly planted on the floor and that will provide the support for weight shifting and postural adjustment while writing. And their back will be slight flex forward and head should be in correct distance from the paper and their paper should be correctly slanted and then uh, they'll be writing with the dominant hand and the non-dominant hand will stabilize the paper. So this is the uh, writing posture of the writing uh, posture. Okay. So next is paper position. So the position of the paper should be slanted on the desktop so that it is parallel to the forearm of the writing hand. This angle enables the student to see the written work and to avoid smearing of the writing. The writing instrument should be held below the baseline and the non preferred hand that should be stabilized the writing paper. Uh, if the child is right-handed, there should be 25 to 30 degree of left slant of the paper and paper should be just right to the body's midline. And if the child is left-handed, there should be 30 to 35 degree of slant and paper should be just right to the midline of the body. Next is a pencil grasp. So the ideal pencil grasp is a dynamic tripod with an open web space. Uh, there are variations of grasp exist. Some grips make a handwriting more difficult and less functional. So it's important to consider modifying a pencil grasp when the muscular pressure or uh, when the child is writing, they are giving more tension. And uh, during handwriting, that may result in fatigue. In that condition, we need to modify their pencil grasp as well as when the child is unable to use the controlled and precise finger and thumb movements due to tightly closed web space. And when the child holds the pencil with more pressure on the pencil tip as well as more pressure on the fingers, that time also we need to consider to modify the pencil grasp of the child. So always uh, an ideal pencil grasp will be a dynamic tripod grasp with an open web space. Next is uh, behavioral frames of reference. Occupational therapists use reinforcing environment to improve adaptive behavior and child's social competence. The basic premise of the behavioral frame of reference is that measurable adaptive behaviors can be learned through interaction with a reinforcing environment. It can be a verbal reinforcer or it can be a physical or anything the child is more interested in. Next is accommodation. It's already covered by Nadia. So this approach reduces the impact that writing has on learning or expressing knowledge without substantially changing the process or the product. The strategies which we are used in accommodation are change the demands of writing date, adjust the volume of the work and change the complexity as well as change the tools and change the format of the product. If we are changing the demands of writing date, uh, like uh, for example, allow more time for writing, 
encourage learning keyboarding skills that may help to increase the speed as well as the legibility of the written work. Uh, we can adjust the volume of the work by providing a partially completed worksheet so that the students can fill in the details under major headings and allow them to use abbreviations. For changing the complexity, we can break writing into stages or we can give small, small paragraphs to write. In case of tools, we can use the appropriate tool that will be a uh, child will be most comfortable and uh, we can add grips on the writing instrument as well as we can suggest a software if the child is needed with that. In change the format of the product, uh, we can give we can use typing instead of writing or allow for the oral presentation or visual presentation rather than the written presentations. So the next type of uh, learning disability is dyspraxia. So uh, before knowing what is dyspraxia, we need to know about what is praxis. Praxis is the ability uh, to do the skilled movements. In person with learning disability, there will be uh, they may have delay or uh, they may have delay in the planning as well as execution of the complex movements. So uh, the characteristics of the client with dyspraxia can be, uh, the, they may, they'll be having problems in play, developmental and educational characteristics. So the characteristics are uh, child may look clumsy and they may have poor tactile discrimination. Uh, their body scheme will be inadequate uh, if the body scheme is inadequate, they'll be having difficulty in relating their bodies to physical objects and environments in environmental space. So they'll be having difficulty in imitating the action of the others and direction of movement may be disturbed. Or uh, they may break the toys unintentionally. And they will be having problems with difficulty with the sequencing and timing of the actions that is involved in a motor task. And the other problems are problems in gross motor skills as well as in the sports, uh, problems in constructive or manipulative play, handwriting difficulties. Uh, they may accompany with the learning disabilities to slowness in learning activities of daily living, especially in the writing patterns and all. So their behavioral characteristics include uh, low self-esteem and the poor self-concept. Uh, they may get easily frustrated they avoid new situations and uh, often manipulative or they may prefer talking to doing. They'll be more talkative and uh, they often late and forgetful. They'll be disorganized in approaching to tasks. And in dyspraxia, let's see what an occupational therapist will do. So we'll start with the assessment process. So first thing will be interview. Then will be observation. So in interview, we, we used to interview the mother or father or the teacher and obtain information about the child's current level of functioning and their early development. And we need to perform a classroom observation and as well as non-standardized clinical observation of the neuromotor behavior, like how the child is playing, how the child is doing each motor activities. All these things we need to observe. And the common uh, standardized assessment that we use to assess dyspraxia are sensory integration and practice test, Miller assessment for preschoolers, movement assessment battery for the children, and development of uh, developmental test of visual motor integration and motor free and motor free visual perceptual test. So moving on to the treatment part. So we'll be using a sensory integrative treatment. The treatment for children with developmental coordination delay with a sensory integration basis involves a one-to-one -one session. And uh, it's more of a child lead approach. So uh, this will increase the opportunity to take the sensory information such as touch, deep pressure, movement experiences, and visual information. So this is sensory information that will provide feedback and improve body awareness as well as the awareness of where the child is in space. And it is essential that the child should be actively involved in the purposeful and meaningful task. So the commonly uh, used equipment for sensory integration approach are the gym ball, swing, uh, a balance beam. These are the common equipments we use 
in sensory integrative approach so in the first picture child will be a uh, child is lying prone on the weight, uh, gym ball and bearing weight uh, weight on one hand and reaching the other hand and the second activity child is transferring doing transferring toys by lying down on the gym ball so all these things will help to improve their motor ability and their uh, practice skills like uh, they'll be they'll be teaching to do the skillful movements and here the child is lying down on the swing and trying to reach for a ball here we are using our proprioceptive uh, sensory input and uh, simultaneously the vestibular input and in the second thing uh, second picture the child is sitting on the vestibular swing and doing the targeted drawing activity so their eye hand coordination is improving by doing this activity there we are providing uh, vestibular input along with the proprioceptive input next is cognitive goal directed approach it is a problem solving approach here we used to assist the child in identifying uh, developing and using the cognitive strategies to perform their daily occupations effectively and the last thing is compensatory skill development approach so this aim to help the child and family to develop a specific skills or copying the strategies in the face of dyspraxia for example uh, if the child is not able to hold the pencil properly then we are adding weight onto the pencil and adding extra grip for the pencil or we can suggest a use of computer etc yeah. and always remember that the way you behave and respond to the challenges has a big impact to impact on your child and uh, a good attitude won't solve the problems associated with learning disability but it can uh, it can give confidence to your child so always love your child thank you thank you anju for that very extensive and exhaustive uh, explanation on how occupational therapists help particularly when it comes to writing uh, we do a lot of questions for you by many of our um, Our teachers who are attending this seminar, this webinar, and the parents. And so, how exactly should you handle children who are themselves already having a tough time? So, I welcome you, ma'am, to this webinar, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Ma'am, are you there? Thank you, ma'am. 
Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you this morning. It is also a proud moment for me because I am sharing this wonderful platform with Susan, who was my student. Thank you, Astromed City, for giving me this opportunity, and thank you, Susan, for inviting me. The topic given to me, classroom strategies and parental support, is very close to my heart. The awareness of learning disabilities began to spread to our schools of Kerala in the beginning of 90s. The Pediatric Association had conducted a conference in Cochin, which was attended by the school management and teachers from all over Kerala. When we stepped out of the hall after the program, we were all on a guilt mode. How many students have we detained in all the classes just because they did not get an average of 35%? And the humiliation that the child went through for a fault that was not his? And what are the kinds of punishments that we gave them because we thought we branded them as lazy? stubborn, and so on. Now, times have changed and the awareness have set in. We have remedial measures and there are resource rooms and the education policies have also changed. But I feel we still have a long way to go. So many areas to explore. What I intend to do today is to share some of the classroom strategies and some of my experiences. However big the number in the classroom is, the teachers have an uncanny knack of identifying students who has got learning disorders, even without knowing the parameters. It could be regarding the reading skills, that is if they are unable to read like their counterparts, or it could be a comprehension where they're not able to understand the content, or it could be the writing skills where they're not able to write what they intend to write, and speaking and even arithmetic. It could also be regarding the directionality, for example, not getting the left and right correct, up and down and so on. So now what are the strategies that we can adopt in the classroom when we have such students? Now, uh, there are no hard and fast rules, okay? There are no common strategies, but these are some of the strategies that has been tested and proved and easy to follow. I'm sure you all must be doing this and I hope it will also resonate with what you're doing. Um, I feel one of the foremost, so there are certain basic requirements, you know, to create a situation which is easy for us to take these children through. So one is how, to, how do you create a suitable situation or a, a, a suitable environment? It is, the first thing is to sensitize their peers. The, by sensitizing them, their peer group will be empathetic and would be a great support to the child who has got learning disability. And I honestly feel that empathy is one value that we need to hold very close to the heart. Without empathy, nothing works. I just want to share a small uh, experience uh, what happened in my teaching career. Um, you know, Susan's sister is, is an autistic child. When she came into our class, and in those times, we I didn't even know what autism means and what, a, you know, so I, I was clueless about this uh, disorder. So what we did was assigned a friend to this particular child who became a guardian angel. And slowly, the entire class volunteered to be her friend and they started celebrating all her achievements. They started, she became the prized possession of her class and the whole scenario, the whole class changed. So, which also gave the child so much of confidence to come to school every day and be with her friends. The second uh, strategy could be, or the requirement would be, um, creating a connect with the child. 
So how do we create a connect with the child? So when you create, when you connect with the child, when you form a have a bonding, you feel you you give the child a lot of confidence, and you know the child feels that you are approachable, and also feel that you are non-judgmental. So sometimes it may not be feasible, or you know, to do this in the classroom. But if it is, if you find it difficult, you can also do it in various ways. One is to, one is just to pick up a casual conversation. This is these are some of the techniques which I have I have tried and worked. You know, getting a getting engaged with them in some casual conversation. So get the child to talk. Get you know get to know the child better. and also try to find if there is anything common in both of you it could be some interest it could be music it could be food it could be sports it could be anything so somewhere you will find there is a common interest and you can catch on that you can build on that you know i remember a boy who loved about aeroplanes he started talking to me about aeroplanes so i i had no idea about all these things and he would come every day with lots of pictures and show me Okay, so I showed, I started showing a lot of interest in aeroplane, and I started reading up about it. And then, you know, some of the other, you know, when you keep thinking about the same thing, uh, it is the universe way of uh, showing you uh, some some path. And someday, some stories would just pop up. And I still remember sharing a story about two boys who tried to escape from uh, a country to Spain. Is that is from? I think that was from uh, uh, Cuba to Spain in the. in the compartment of the of of the aircraft so all these things fascinated this child and slowly you know i was able to take this child through and then at least get a good grade for him and you can always find you know when you start working with this it it works magic on them and if possible you know if you can go one extra mile just open the doors of your personal space you don't have to do it very often but sometimes this actually works because you know they 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 feel very comfortable with you that is that is a magic that can you know uh, help them to be good better achievers now try to be ambidextrous when i say ambidextrous it is basically uh, what i mean is you know uh, trying to strike a balance i'm more of a person of a heart sometimes so therefore it always remind i remind myself you know there should be a balance between the heart and the brain and also when you when you show your affection don't go overboard you know you should be for, you should be lovable at the same time be firm with them another requirement is how do we build up the self esteem of the child you know a student with a learning issue will tend to be looked down by their peers this has a significant impact on the self esteem which in turn have a negative impact on knowledge assimilation so highlighting a strength will build up a self esteem um there was this uh, boy in my class um who had a you know a learning disorders and our, our class uh, i i used to teach him social science and um normally the class will be soon after the break time so when i get into the class it will be a complete chaos then this boy has been will be royally bullied by the others and um, you know it was very sad for that boy to be in the class but i realized that uh, this boy was very good with computers and but in those times computers were not children were not too familiar with it but his parents being doctors had given him a computer to work on so he would write all his answers and so the parent would say that he's okay with typing so i asked him so we were just dealing with a, sto- a topical natural ve- vegetation so i asked him you know i said see uh, can you make a presentation so he said yeah i can do that so it was like a secret okay because there is a lot of drama involved in it and then he his presentation was ready and um, so i told the entire all the sixth stand all the all the students of a b c d i said there is a surprise we are going to the audio visual hall so they they were all so thrilled they said ma'am are you going to show us a movie hmm so i said it's a surprise and so they the children actually thought that we were going to show them a movie so after they were all seated i i let this boy get onto the stage everyone's jaw dropped 
and he got to the stage and took the mic mic in his hand and he explained the whole thing just like a pro he became a superhero in just one day and it became a phenomenal difference in his life so when i got this invitation from susan uh, the first story that popped into my mind was this and i called up his parents now right now they are in canada just to know what he is doing right now and i was very happy to hear what the mother said they said that he has finished his business administration and he is into investments and now he has got assets which is much more than what the parents have yeah so once you have all these basic um, things the foundation under control we can go into the specific learning strategies now as i told you uh, there is no hard and fast rules there are umpty number of strategies available if you just google you will find that you know such a long list uh, of things that you can that, that that you can do so choose what works for you and with the child and your situation number one is break learning task into small steps when i say small steps if you want the child to write a long answer uh, it is very difficult for him to think about from that point if you let's say uh, you have to write a uh, 200 words answer because all the question papers are like that as we go to higher classes we have answers to be written the number of words are very important 60 words 100 words and so on so to a child who finds it difficult to write a sentence with five words or 10 words how can he write about 60 and 100 words so start with you can also play a game this is like something that you can play in the class and this is also again another way in directly telling the child that you can do it so ask them how many uh, you know uh, how many uh, like the ask them ask them like you know whether they can create a sentence with 10 words so you start playing this game like each person will say a word you connect and then finally you write the whole thing on the board and then you realize that okay it has exceeded 10 words or maybe you can make and make a sentence with 10 words go to 20 30 40 you know this is this is how you slowly take them through and gain their confidence that they can write answers which is 60 words 100 words and so on next is to probe regularly to check their understanding so as we explain you can always ask them in a very nice way you know as i always say be kind to them always try to uh, you know as i said the empathy step into the shoes and you know think from their point of view as a child how will you like the teacher to address you you know it's not not scolding but you know if you make them feel good and ask them a question and also give them clues just don't you know wait for them to give the answer give them small clues and you know and celebrate his achievement it it works wonders now provide regular quality feedback when i say regular quality feedback once they bring the assignment even if you keep the others away make sure that you know you talk to these children and when you say good well done whatever it is just try to explain why you felt that this work is good you can maybe you can say it i like the way you presented it i love the illustrations okay uh, this is something that appealed to me say that you know i also have a some, something very common okay we share a home, common interest give a high five you know you, you you take them into your hands it's very very quick now present information visually and verbally it was already discussed by nadia how visual information thanks to all the smart class the smart boards i also always wonder i always wish you know i was born sometime at this this period so that and and in a school like you know in, in the recent schools because now people are all aware of it and there's so much of visual things i i and i love to see something that is visual so you know it's very easy for children to understand when there is something so there are certain concepts which cannot be you know when you teach you cannot you you're not able to visualize it but when you have this on the screen it becomes very easy for them to understand the concepts and that is basically using your your two eyes but there is something that you can use with the inner eye this is one strategy that you know a technique that i always use in my social science classes i'm sure most of you must be doing this but you know take them on a just like a, just like how you do a guided meditation you know take them on a trip 
I recall a, uh, you know, a session where we did about, um, it was Indus Valley Civilization. So literally all of us getting into the boat, sailing through the a boat cruise and then you know, going to this valley and then you know, climbing up the steps, going down to the farms, uh, you know, plucking all the fruits and vegetables, what they grow. So they get an idea about what are the, what, what kind of farming that they do. Then going up to the, to the upper part of the city, you know, so they know that there are steps and then getting into the houses, ask, they're all doing it. All these are done by closing their eyes. And I tell them, okay, now you feel the walls of the houses. Uh, how do you feel? Do you feel it smooth? Okay. Is, is it colored? You know, you give them and also go to the great bath, explore the whole place. And then end of the lesson, end of 45, it would just take 45 minutes. At end of the 45 minutes, we are able to complete a lesson which might take you about two to three days. But all the answers, all the questions will be covered in that. And they'll be able to answer all the questions that you ask them. So that is the power of visualization. You know, Try to uh, bring visualization techniques more and more into uh, when, you, when you deal with them. So it's very easy. The next is um, use diagrams, graphics, and pictures. This is again discussed by Nadia. So I'm not going, uh, not going to uh, the details of it, but what she said was something very valid, which I hope all the schools will uh, implement. You know, have a place where you can stack clay. Because clay modeling, when the children work with their hands, our children right now, as she said, we know they can only use their mobile phones and nothing else. So now, you know, you, you have no idea. I remember in, in Vidyodaya where I was working way back, we had a place where we had a clay, we had clay modeling classes. And during the break time, all of them would come, they would take one lump of clay, come back to the class. And, you know, I know the class would be messy, of course, but they were all ready to make something or the other. And I found that children who have got learning disabilities made better models than the other ones, which means that, you know, they are excellent with their hands and, you know, they can do wonders. So when we talk about learning disability, please, I am, again, I would like to, like to reiterate, it is only one part of their, uh, with the faculty. The rest, everything is very, very strong. They are superpower children. So they are not inferior to anybody for that matter. But only thing is that there are some basic education that we need to focus on. So we have to take them through. Another one is providing photocopies of notes. Yeah, this is again, one of my favorite um, thing, something that I do with a lot of love. You know, I make personal notes. This is basically my lecture notes when I, you know, uh, you know, whenever I take a class, I just make, I just prepare for the, for the, pre, for the class next day. But I make, I make a note because it just happened when I realized that there were many children who had this learning disability, who had a, a various, of, at, at various levels. And uh, some of the long texts, you know, they get bogged down by this long text. They don't read, they don't try to read a textbook. So what I did was I tried making these uh, lovely notes, uh, handwritten and then take a photocopy of it. But so much of love I give them and say, you know, this is my love that I'm sharing, okay? And then and I told them after reading the notes, now read the textbook, it becomes more clear to you. And that has also worked wonders with children. And again, while giving assignments, what are the kind of assignments that you would like to give? Now it can be written, it's assignment, which we normally give, it can be, uh, you know, assignments where, you know, they can do some presentation. As I was talk talking about the other boy, presentations, you know, you find that, you know, they can make such marvelous presentations. So which gives them the confidence. And at, at the same time, when they make the presentation, they also tend to get the concept right. So ultimately that is what we want them to do. And another way in which the, I, like in somebody was asking, see, um, or rather I would say there was this article about the lost art of memorizing. See some of our uh, exams and there are certain things that needs to be memorized, okay? 
but I find that many children find it very difficult to memorize. For example, certain definitions need to be memorized, certain concepts need to be memorized. So they find it very difficult to memorize. Um, I would just share my own experience. Maybe I realized I had some disability at, at so many areas, I, 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 I admit. And one was the languages. Uh, I just couldn't read a line in Hindi, but I could speak Hindi well because my neighbors were North Indians. So what I did was, I don't know what gave me the idea. We had a small tape recorder and we used to sing, you know, when we play, we used to sing and then we used to record it and we used to do uh, stuff like that. So I tried this. Uh, I, used to, I used to read slowly and would tape it and I would listen back. So that is how I learned my Hindi. I think till college I followed that and it worked. Otherwise, I don't think I would have passed my college. Then, um, teaching lessons to stories. Children remember better when you narrate it through stories because everybody loves to hear stories. So if you have that uh, uh, inclination or if you can just you know, have a small shift of being very serious, you know, try and bring uh, uh, the things into a story form and explain to them, I'm sure they will enjoy your classes. And um, again, understand the concept better. And the last one is theater. There is nothing to beat dramatics. It is basically where, you know, they get to be active. You can plan a, a theater, a class on any topic that you take. Surprisingly, I realized, I thought this was possible only for um, English classes and maybe for social science, you know, when you want to start teach about um, the freedom struggle and all that. I realized I could do that even in my economics class. So, and they enjoyed it, definitely. And the concept, the hard, these difficult concepts are made, you know, very simple when, you know, when they all get involved in it. Now, <clears throat> coming to the parental support, I know this has been discussed. Dr. Jason had explained so beautifully yesterday about the parental support. But um, since this task was also given to me, I would just like to reiterate, reiterate and take you through a few points, which I thought is very pertinent. Um, uh, number one, first of all, remember, uh, you know, accept the fact, okay, that the child has got a disability or a disorder in the case of academics. And please do not make that very, very significant. The child may have a number of potential, but our focus is entirely on academics. And that makes us feel very depressed. And you start comparing our child with the neighbor's child. Okay, he's, and some children, you know, I remember, uh, you know, somebody was uh, like, you know, we have in, in, our, in our apartment, when the, everybody celebrates a child's success. You know, they got 80%, they got 90%, they got 10%. So, um, like, but one parent did not put anything in that. So what happened? She said, oh, no, it's not all that great. I said, what? It is like, you know, whatever beat, you know, this is your child's success. You don't have to compare your child with somebody else's kid. But think about the number. He's a great musician, but the others are not. He's excellent in sports, but others are not. So what are you being sad about? So that is the attitude. You know, a small shift in the attitude can actually give the child a lot of confidence and feel that, you know, he is good. So that is one thing that you always need to make, you know, make him feel. And um, again, learn as much as possible about a child's disability. Like, you know, you should be very sure, but like, as, as they will say, as uh, previous speakers are saying, like, you know, what are the, what, 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 like, whether it's writing, whether it is listening, what are the different disabilities that they have and be, be aware of it. Collaborate with teachers. Yeah, this is one one area which I think uh, we should uh, you know give a little more importance. Please remember, parents and teachers, <clears throat> they are not two different entities. I always say they should be the best buddies all the time because only when they hold hands can they work wonders with a kid. So please be regular with the meetings with the parent meetings and. Uh, Talk to the teachers your concern 
okay so uh, the only thing is that you know sometimes what happens is i know out of your concern sometimes you will be too overbearing maybe the teacher must be doing her best but sometimes uh, you know there are, there are many situations but once you get once you trust each other i think things becomes very simple i'm sure susan would vouch for me because our relationship is like i don't know how many years susan about uh, 30 about 25 30 years yeah so you can you can just carry that relationship for a very very long time and you feel very good about it now also have very uh, this is something it's a very uh, it's something really which really works have a parent buddy just like you have a, a friend for your child in the classroom uh, you need to find a friend a parent friend with whom you can share uh, you with whom uh, you can where, where you can go and collect the notes if the child is absent for a long time you don't have to come to school every time i see many parents coming to a school and sitting and writing the writing notes of the classes that they've missed, but try to find out someone who's close to your location, you know, and then get it, you may get that information from the teacher and I'm sure they'll be ready to help. So that also is a good thing. Then uh, provide opportunities for your child to use their strength. See, today's scenario, this pandemic has become a, as a great eye opener. I think the creative abilities of the people have just come out. One of my friend was telling me, my son, I don't think he's very good in academics. So what I did was I, I took him to, and he's like very brilliant. He, he, he plays Batman like a pro. So I, she took him to the academy and they said, wonderful. He said, you know, they said, give him, uh, you have to give him to us. Okay, just give us five years and we'll see what we can, what we can turn him out to be. Wonderful. Now, do, do you have the habit of reading out to, uh, out to, out to your children? Sometimes, uh, you know, they, I know not, it's not sometimes, it's always, you know, they may not like to read long text. You can ask them to lie down, relax, and you can just read and maybe you can discuss and maybe you can crack a joke about it, you know, so that, you know, you lighten the mood of the whole thing. Otherwise, when you say you study means the whole the whole situation changes, it becomes so dense. So, you know, that is one area where, you know, where you can spend some more time, read out some stories to them, talk to them, uh, create an environment which is very, very congenial for them. And as um, what she said, um, as Nadia said, uh, or I think it was Anju who said, remember, don't forget to give them hugs. Hug them often. Hug them and so that, you know, they feel that they are, you know, they are the best. And always remember, choose what you talk to them. Whatever you talk to them, you know, words are very, very powerful. I've, I've been into this uh, practice of energy medicine and, you know, I now realize that, you know, how, how powerful the words are because it is all energy. And each time when you say something, it's the child picks up your vibration. It, it just, it gets, it becomes their inner voice and it, it, it gets stuck in them. You know, it is very, it is not easy to remove that. Whatever they have heard, whatever they picked up right from the time they are born. You know, we casually say if the child uh, takes some time to crawl, you know, they will say, oh, he's, uh, he's muddy and anna. Okay, you, you just grant the child. Okay, it's maybe out of, out of love you say that, but this is something what this child actually picks up. And he tends to be that. And um, also, take the help from a professional. Whenever, whenever you have a situation, do not hesitate. Take the help of a professional because they will be able to guide you better than anybody else. Um, I, I did not touch upon the assessment because Anju has already done it. If you, I'll, but I could, I'll just quickly go through that assessment part also. Uh, the, how the assessments can be conducted. See, number one is basically uh, the, the, what do you call the evaluation. Uh, you know, do not cut marks if they make a spelling mistake. Uh, do not, try not to use a reading pen because otherwise the, red, you know, the, the paper would be so colorful with your reading remarks. Whenever you feel that there should be a correction, you try using a pencil, you know, 
that that is also a good thing and today's scenario i think it's much more relaxed than the previous days now they have they, they have an extra time sometimes they even provide a scribe they have uh, like you know they can even type their answers so there are so many things and even um, the national like dr jason was talking about the national open school which is very very welcoming because i'm i have not so many students who are doing so great in their life i must tell you i can give you one long list of such students you know you can find in an aclam with their broad everywhere who are my students who have done extremely well in their life still doing okay who had these learning disabilities so open national open school is also a very good option so you don't have to you know rack about the cbs this the board exams and all that and um, yeah and uh, finally i'm coming to the club before i close this i this is one um, one small uh, tip to all the parents and teachers uh, you know always remember to bless your child when i say bless your child keep saying that you know you're a you're a good boy you're blessed you're lucky keep saying that and all these things whatever you want the child to be keep saying that like a mantra i'm telling you overnight miracles don't happen but if you practice it you will definitely see a huge change and then the child will be what you really want the child to be so and these words you know can create magic and miracles and who doesn't like to have magic and miracles in life do it and dear friends before i wrap up i just want to say there are two things which happens when we attend a um, a session like this uh, a webinar uh, one is you will be able to resonate with the speaker and feel good each time you feel good you attract more good things and two you there is a take away and i hope you have got them both thank you thank you ma'am for such a wonderful talk that you have given that has uh, sharing your experience i have known you personally i i know that there are many many more stories that you can say about how wonderfully just a little bit in change in the attitude of teachers and parents can uh, make uh, drastic and dramatic changes in lives of children thank you so much ma'am for uh, i'm sure there is not even uh, one teacher who hasn't been influenced by you through this webinar and that every single parent wish that they had teacher like you now we shall move on to the question and answer session we've been getting a lot of questions both through the chat box and also through uh, the the uh, uh, the registration that we had so i now uh, ask both nadia and anju to be accessible so that we can ask questions okay uh and then shall i start with you if that's okay are you still there man i think you're muted sorry no i'm i'm anita man i'll learn it here ah yeah sure so uh, ma'am few things uh, that uh, i would uh, want to just ask you is in an, uh, you you did mention about how to get uh, the children in uh, to sensitize the other classmates about the child's difficulty yeah uh, the the doubt is won't that make the child feel more aloof and alone has that happened in your experience yeah and others are aware of the of that person's child's difficulty okay susan now when you sensitize the 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 class it is not in their presence i think i have not done it done it in their presence so it would be some time where you know i would uh, the child would be taken away for some you know something and then i address it to the rest of the students and also and uh, number one, uh, and also when the child uh, all when the children see that the teacher is kind to them automatically you know there is a shift 
happening there. Okay, yes. so it is not yeah keeping the child in front and then discussing. We don't discuss uh, the child in front of others, but definitely you know talking to them like you know what if you had a sister or brother at home like this, will you treat them the same way? Small small things. You know, children are so malleable, and I'm saying they're way more uh, understanding than the adults. It really doesn't matter which age. Thank you. The other uh, question that we have is um, like uh, uh, again, one parent I think has asked when some students uh, are unable to study long answers and yeah. they're not interested in writing descriptive type questions. Yeah. When the answer, when the question demands it, what exactly can you do as a teacher in that circumstance, in that situation? Yeah, yeah that is what I said about giving them short notes. Okay. Uh, when you give them these short notes, for example, like when I, uh, for, if I'm explaining a particular concept, I know uh, what I do is I prepare, I'm just telling what I, I do, uh, I used to do, uh, I no longer teach now, uh, you know, so what I do is my, my preparation notes, what I prepare, you know, like, you know, there'll be like, what, what is it I do in the first page, like all, all bullet points. And I share these notes with the students who are really weak. So when they look at it, they know, okay, we, the, these are the points. So then it is easy for them to elaborate these points from my explanation. Sometimes when you look at the answer script, you'll be, I'll be smiling to myself when I read the answers because it will be the exact, sometimes it will be verbatim, like how we have explained in the class. So gradually we can take them and make them write better answers by giving the points. So that every paragraph or every uh, answer will have these, at least if let's say if the four points, they'll have the four points and they will be able to explain that. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. A lot of positive uh, feedback from our participants about your session. And thank you so much, ma'am, for, uh, for joining in. Now uh, we'll ask uh, to Anju. Uh, one parent has written that their child draws beautifully but has difficulty in writing. What do you suggest that they do? It's like, uh, it's a classic symptoms of learning disability. If the child is able to draw beautifully and the child is not interested in writing, then we can gradually move on from the drawing to the writing part. Like in Chile, uh, along with the drawing part, we can add on straight lines, sleeping lines, slanting lines, and this gradually we can move on to the writing as well. And we can introduce the writing of letters along with the pictures. Likewise, we can improve their interest into the writing part. Uh, to Nadia, uh, is it better to make a child rote learn or make them understand? Uh, I suggest uh, make them understand, give practical examples and uh, uh, you uh, every time try to connect the new information to the previously learned thing okay because our memory in our brain will always memorize things like that so that i said about uh, mind map and all so just uh, make them understand what exactly it is that's better than broadly learning Okay, one more thing. Uh, thank you, ma. Uh, it's to Anju. Okay. When should cursive writing begin? At what age we should start? For cursive, exactly for cursive writing, there is when the child is uh, when the child met all the prerequisites for handwriting thing. Then we can start with the manuscripts. Okay, uh, by the age of five years, they'll be able to copy or they'll be able to print almost all the uppercase and lowercase letters. Once the child achieved all these things, then we can move on to the cursive writing. So it's after five yeah. you think about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, another thing is, uh, when uh, can child is using two different types of handwriting at a stretch? Handwriting means uh, they are mixing cursive or manuscript or they are using different grasp to write. Each thing is so clear. They don't know. <laughs> if the child is mixing manuscript and cursive, then we can focus on in which type of handwriting the child is more comfortable. So we'll be moving with that and will not force the child to write in cursive only. 
So in which pattern the child is more comfortable, that we will focus on. Do you think cursive writing should be taken out from syllabus? <laughs> <laughs> if there is a chance. <laughs> if the child is comfortable with manuscript, always give priority to the child, okay? If he is comfortable with manuscript, let them write in manuscript. No need for go for cursing. I always suggest that. <laughs> Is there any scope of changing handwriting at an older age? Older age, uh, we can't change handwriting, but if the grasp is not proper, then we can try to modify the grasp. What is proprioceptive input in a writing? Proprioceptive in the sense, uh, we, are, we are giving more pressure. Mm -hmm. If the child's muscle tone is low, or if they are having uh, low proximal joint stability, then we'll be adding on weights to the pencil or to the wrist. So then we can use the wristband, like weighted band, but we can add uh, more weight to the pencil that I have already shown in the PPT. Mm -hmm. Like that, we can add pressure uh -huh. input. Uh, how to improve handwriting? Means how can we help the uh, child to improve handwriting? Handwriting, uh, first we need to this know. This is not for a child with dysgraphia. This is it's for a normal, 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 normal children children. who mm -hmm. have handwriting issues. Okay. What advice can you give parents where the handwriting is illegible? Do they, okay. really, uh, do they need to meet an occupational therapist to see why the handwriting is illegible? Or can they try something at home before? Uh, in that question also, if the child is having poor motor skills, like their muscle tone is low or their proximal joint stability is not adequate, that time we, uh, they need to consult an occupational therapist so that we can initially we can improve their muscle tone or the once the motor abilities are acquired their handwriting automatically it will come as legible if there is no motor issues then we can start like uh, tracing copying and writing in the two line book writing in the four line book all these things we can use there's one interesting question that uh, there are two opinions about writing Okay. So first is that there was this, uh, a video that was going a little viral about a school that was teaching ambidextricity. Okay. That every child was made to learn to write with both hands. Okay. Okay. So actually, as per what that video was showing, it was like both of them are writing in uh, different things using different hands. It's not even the same, same thing. things. Okay. So there is one opinion and that is good to improve or increase the connectivity between the two hemispheres of the brain. There is another opinion that says that you should stick on to one hand so that there is no confusion. So since both of you are here, what is your take on this? What do you think about it? Uh, what I think is initially stick on to one hand. If the child is comfortable with left hand, let them write in left hand, okay. So when one dominant hand is dominant with one hand, uh, do things with both hands, okay. There are brain gym exercises. So brain, in brain gym exercises, we use uh, both the sides equally. So both our hemisphere, brain hemisphere, both left and right hemisphere work equally. So it is very, very uh, good for writing, for learning and also uh, let them write with both hands. Okay, after acquiring one dominant hand, uh, let them do that, right? What do you same think? thing, I'll, go. I'll also go with the same thing. So actually, if you look at it, apart from writing, even other skills like maybe learning instruments where one hand does something, the other mm -hmm. hand does something else or even uh, uh, knitting, uh, okay. stitching, all these things where you have two hands being used simultaneously mm -hmm. are all good non-academic activities Activist. that actually help in academics. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, and next for Nadia. Uh, can autism child with an average IQ can have remedial training? Uh, if the child is showing academic difficulty, uh, we can give remedial training. But along with that, you know, if the child is having uh, associated problem because of autism, like a social skill deficit or a language problem, first manage that. Then uh, slowly, slowly, uh, we can give remedial. If the child is showing academic difficulty, then only we can. And can this be given to a borderline IQ, child with a borderline IQ? No, that uh, I mentioned earlier. For remedial training, IQ is must. 
the child must have average or above average IQ. Another question, when the remedial training does not work or have no improvements after long training, what is the next step? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. If remedial training is, doesn't work, it means that the child is not having learning disability. There is a phenomenon called response to intervention, RTI. Sometimes when we get a child, we do assessment and we are confused with the diagnosis. Then we give a provisional diagnosis like maybe the child is having learning disability. Then we start with remediation. And after a proper remediation, after six months, we do a reassessment. If the child is showing improvement, we can say that the child is having learning disability. If the child is not improving, it is not because of learning disability. That is the answer. But if we change that question in another way, if and sometimes we get a child who's very old enough, like uh, 15 or 16 years old, and it's, uh, not identified initially. In that time, if uh, it's very difficult to start from the beginning. So in such cases, we suggest NIOS. That Anugama said, right, National Institute of Open Schooling. There they, uh, they have uh, the option to skip certain, if they are not willing to uh, study language, they can drop language, they can drop max. Instead of that, they will give uh, IT information, IT uh, subject is there, bakery, uh, cooking, uh, art and craft is there. Okay, so if the child is not sh uh, showing or is no time for remediation, we can suggest an Okay, thank you. Uh, how much improvement and to what extent kid with learning disabilities will improve with these remediation? Yeah, they will improve drastically. If the child is having learning disability, they will improve. Uh, but we can we can't uh, make it faster. We can't see a sudden improvement. But slowly, slowly, uh, after six or seven months, the child will improve. They will definitely, they have skills. They have IQ. They have... Uh, all the other skills. So always start from the positives. Okay. Uh, shall I uh, share an experience? Please do. Okay. I started my career in 2010 and uh, I, I was, uh, I got job in a psychiatric hospital in the beginning and it was in Idiki district. And uh, I was, uh, I got placed in a, a pediatric psychiatric ward okay so it's a psychiatric uh, hospital i mentioned so there i got a child who is 14 years of old age okay and with severe behavioral issue he tried to kill his mother he set fire and uh, he detached the gas tube and these are the behavior issue and i got the child and I, uh, for the initial session, he was not cooperative for the se session. I gave blocks and he throw that blocks to me. And this is the first scar of my remedial training uh, career. And slowly, 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 I talked to him. I spent time with him. I play with him. And I, I, for, the, for the first one or two weeks, I simply said, I love you. Raghav, I love you. I'm with you. You can share your experience with me. So after one or two uh, weeks, slowly, slowly, he uh, opened up many things to me. Uh, actually, his father is a professor and his mother is a doctor. But in uh, hope, no one will understand what he's doing and he's having learning disability. And he is 14 years or 50 years of age. And it is very difficult. His discrepancy was very wide, okay? His academic performance is equal to uh, grade two or three. In that case, we suggest an NIOS and he completed his 10th standard. He completed his 12th standard. And now he is a very famous fashion photographer. I'm very happy to share this experience. One of my child is doing his MPPS at Trishur Medical College. 
one of my child is doing his architect degree one of my child is doing his mba at uk so please these child don't give give them positive energy and don't demotivate it they will bloom to the fullest thank you very good uh, then another query there is a five year child who had difficulty in writing small letters with or with sounds of letter there is also uh difficulty in remembering spellings even after teaching in different way so they want to ask how can they help teacher has asked a five year old child yes a five year old child writing writing difficulty mm. uh difficulty in writing small letters with and with sounds of letters so there is also difficulty in remembering spellings even after teaching so many times so can they help or should we worried or whatever so i would say this is this uh, may be a learning disability from what it sounds like and uh, again uh, if uh, anyone would remember what i had shared yesterday if you they don't learn the way you teach you need to teach the way they learn mm-hmm. so find out what this five year old child is interested in is good at and use that method to teach whatever uh, writing skills also you want to teach like anitana had said about clay uh, it is not to to learn alphabets uh, it is not always necessary to write and you can model them out of clay you can make clay alphabets it gives another sense to it it gives uh, the the sense of touch especially is very 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 important. so when you model things out of clay even spelling i sometimes tell my parents to use magnetic letters and spell out the word mm-hmm. because it is a different mode entirely it is not just pen and pencil so plastic letters magnetic letters magnetic letters so. plastic letters even with clay mm-hmm. when people are afraid of using clay mm-hmm. because children will eat it use chapati dough something <laughs> that is magical <laughs> that you can just make things up so uh, again always always remember that your the children our children all of us have multiple intelligences find out what the child is good at some good. children learn by music mm. the uh, the spellings some spellings like yeah some difficult spellings you cannot pronounce it there is uh, quiet is q u i t e and q u i e t where where comes what is difficult because english is an opaque language but make a song out of it learn spellings in in the musical way children who have musical intelligence will remember the spellings after that so uh it is not one size fit all none of us are the same we all have distinctive brains distinctive fingerprints we are all learn differently it is uh it takes effort and more than effort i would say it's the heart that matters if you want to help the child who is in front of you you will find a way open hearts are what we need both in parents and in teachers does nadia and anjali have anything more to add yes that same thing right? same thing <laughs> then i think uh, we have no more questions mm-hmm. um okay uh, memory improving memory nadia okay. can you tell something about that like working memory Uh, where they are not able to retain much uh, either for calculation purposes or anything or even uh, short term memory getting translated to long term memory can you just uh, because uh, our parents and teachers are say that one common complaint is that they don't remember mm-hmm. okay. teach them they don't remember okay so uh, memory before that uh, memory problem usually begins with uh, the problem with attention because uh, children are not attending they they, are, they know what to attend and uh, how to attend they don't know how to do that so do attention training first then uh, go to memory uh, make small small chunks okay small small because our brain will uh, learn things very quickly but in a small small units okay so uh, make it small uh, if it is a big answer or like that uh, make them short make short notes uh, train them to make uh, notes and and use that mind map graphical organizers like that you always wish uh, find out which modality is 
uh, dominant in child. Okay, there are visual learners, there are auditory learners, there are tact tactile learners. So first of all, identify which modality is working for the child. Okay, so then plan according to that. If it's a visual learner, uh, give more uh, visual cues, visual organizers, visual uh, pictures like that. Okay, if it's auditory learner, uh talk here or uh, like uh, give uh, things in a song form or like that okay so that that's how we can improve and, and i would say repetition also yeah repeat repeat, repeat. Consistency, consistency and repetition is needed mm -hmm. for any sort of memory transfer from whether it is from working memory working. to short term memory or short term memory to long term memory repetition, repetition. is key so again, that does not mean mindlessly repeating over and over and over again. That same concept or same uh, same idea, same point that they're trying to learn, use different modalities again. Either they write it out, they speak it out, they teach it to their dolls, or some other, uh, they do a drama on it, like what Antanan said. So repetition is key for memory, for memorizing anything, and uh, use different modalities always. Uh, I, uh, is there any method of teaching how to read? What do you, what is the order in which you proceed? First vowels, word family, sight words, etc. Mm. So is there a, any, uh, is there any order that you... Yeah, always uh, start with uh, letters, okay? Letter names, then letter sounds, short vowel sounds, long vowel sounds, then in between uh, teach consonants which is uh, having only one sound then word families uh, there, there is a step-by-step -step procedure okay so always begin with that and in between uh, teach side towards also okay so it will improve fluency uh, i think anju this is more for you you have a question, a sixth grade child. So sixth grade will be approximately how old? Six plus six will be 12 years. 12 years. Years. So a 12 year old child whose IQ range is between 80 and 90. It's not organized in life skills and not aware of safety. So this mm -hmm. is not actually uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. But because we have a parent who has asked this, this one time they're making an exemption. So mm -hmm. Anju, can you throw just a little bit of light on how how they can approach this child with, with regard to to awareness of, of safety maybe awareness of safety like uh, initially we can do that modeling part like uh, life skill training as a part of occupational therapy so that we can do modeling like uh, showing videos to them and uh, showing real life incidents to them and repeating the same thing and after that we can ask to them like such a situation we can describe them and we can ask what you will do like that after so many repetitions of modeling we can teach actually teach them like so this is the consequence if you are doing like this this will be the result like that we can do role plays also right yeah. role plays very effective uh, group role plays given uh, actually act out things right yeah so once they are aware of the concept, yeah. then we can do this role play. Okay, I think we have. This is the last question that we'll uh, take after which uh, we shall close mm -hmm. this webinar. So we have a question from a child, uh, not with, uh, not actually learning disability, but it pertains to writing, uh, who is ambidextrous. So they, he writes both hands, but uh, writes correctly in the right hand and use, writes a mirror image in the left hand. Uh, and, but uh, I, so if I, I have a similar child actually who is actually left-handed, mm -hmm. but when he starts writing with his left hand, everything is in mirror image mm -hmm. and goes from right to left instead of left to right. Whereas from the right hand, he writes it normally, but handwriting is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the pencil gr grasp is a problem. Everything mm -hmm. there is a problem. So otherwise, the child is brilliant and uses both tasks and biomanual activities and all are fine. So what do you do? 
do you ask them to, to train the left hand or do you work on the right hand? Because otherwise, the child is left handed. For all other activities, child is left handed. Okay, so the child will be right dominant, like right brain dominant yes, person. Yeah, right brain. Okay. Person. So it's more better to teach in left hand itself. Yeah. But left hand, this is a problem. They start, they do the exact opposite. So they start from right side mm. of the page, right side of the page, and move towards mm. the left, and everything is in mirror image. Okay, and in right, in right hand, hand, that that part is right. It goes from left to right. Uh -huh. Formation uh, of the letters. Formation of the letters is bad. Formation of letters is better with the with the left hand. So in such a situation, do you try and rectify the writing in the left hand, or do you try and improve the writing in the right hand? Like uh, it will be rectifying the left hand. We'll be working on the spacing, formation, size, and slant. That will be better. Way. That will be better. Mm -hmm. uh, rather, than, rather, than, uh, rather than trying to change, change the, to the image and yeah. everything mm -hmm. on the left hand. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but uh, can this child have a learning disability? Because he's mirroring with the left hand? Uh, chances is there, but we can't say only that. Only we can't, uh, say, we can't say, say that the child is having learning disability. Uh, must, uh, maybe is in the risk, risk at risk uh, category, but not. Yeah, we can't say like say that. that. So thank you to all our speakers today uh, for a wonderful session on remediation and the various things that parents and teachers need to do. I hope it has been very useful to all the participants attending our webinar. Thank you once again for. Uh, uh, to you participants for actually sitting patiently for so long and listening to us over the past two days. A special thanks to Anita Man, who in spite of a really, really busy schedule managed to spend time for this and gave such a nice heartwarming talk. Ma'am, uh, as a token of our appreciation, uh, we uh, uh, would like to present you with a small memento. Small memento. Uh, so this uh, is a handmade, handcrafted by uh, Takshan Creatives that is a subsidiary of a foundation called Uja Foundation which, which works at empowering differently abled people with multiple vocational skills so that they can be independent. So thank you so much ma'am and thank you one and all for attending the webinar. Uh, and. Uh, Yes, do keep in, do uh, get back to us if you have any further queries and we will try our best to answer. Thank you and have a good day. God bless you all.